All right, guys, we are back with another great episode of Let's Talk Fantasy Fishing. I am your host, Brian Carter. And uh, guys, we got another special guest back with us, Mr. Kyle Jesse. Tonight, guess what, guys? Bassmaster at Pickwick Lake. <clears throat> but man, the last event, guys, I bombed. I, I do not know what happened. Oh, I do know what happened. Um, I, I picked bad. That's it. It was awful. I, I picked what I thought was going to get me good points to stay where I was. And it really didn't happen. I dropped that from, I think it was like 96 percentile to 92. So <clears throat> we're tightening up a little bit for pick wick. But uh, before Kyle comes on, we want to thank everyone who has played with us this year. Everyone who has been a part of our fantasy. And uh, these guys right here, X Zone Lures. If you haven't had a chance to check out X Zone Lures and all the great plastics that they have to offer, head on over to X Zone Lures right now. They are trusted by Brandon Polinick. You guys all know Brandon came in second last week. Right behind Mr. Lee Lively. Livesey. Livesey is how you say it. Livesey. But uh, yeah, check out all the great products from our sponsors, X Zone Lures. And uh, guys, our fantasy fishing winner from last weekend has not picked up his stuff yet. And there's Mr. Kyle Jesse. See? There he is. What's up, brother? Doing a little intro here. Oh, my bad. No, you're good. But uh, so what I was going to do next is okay. uh, talk about Pickwick Lake, man. And okay. I, I went and did the Wikipedia thing. It's 43,100 acres. The average depth is only 30 feet. And uh, maximum depth is 59 feet it's pretty daggone shallow really yeah yeah a lot of <clears throat> a lot of shallow backwater so i'm sure that probably factors into the average depth but yeah it's i wouldn't say it's overly deep no it's not compared to a lot of you know lakes around here i mean smith Mall lake's a whole sure. lot deeper than that i know we were uh, some friends of mine at work today were talking about clater lake and that's a clear deep water i mean really really deep water right here in central virginia right, right. <clears throat> and guys, it's uh, between two dams uh, in, you know, in the Tennessee Valley Authority. So, yeah, it's a uh, reservoir is created by Pickwick Landing Dam as part of the Tennessee Valley Authority. And it's, uh, like I said, it's two dams, so hydro, hydro lake, power plant lake. So it's going to be a lot of, you think, a lot of. I don't know how much fluctuation of water that lake has, to be honest. It can fluctuate a lot. Last year, obviously in the spring, it, it yeah. fluctuated a ton. It came up, I don't know how many feet, but eight plus probably. I mean, it was super high and it was crap. It was probably, it probably came up more than that because it was, it was actually low um, during practice. And then obviously got all that rain and the, the water jumped up there really quick. So it definitely can fluctuate. Uh, I would, assume bearing you know normal weather it probably shouldn't do that a whole lot this week yeah um guys it uh there's two dams the pickwick landing dam and the wilson dam so it's going to be an interesting event it's going to be hot brother yeah it's definitely going to be warm there's no question about that be uh the, <clears throat> be prepared to lather up with some sunscreen for sure it's gonna be there. uh as you guys can see, Kyle, Kyle's got the sunglasses already going on. He's got he's got the tan. Pretty much keep them all year round, it seems like. But yeah, right now it's about as bad as it's as it's been. <clears throat> you almost look like a character from a movie. I don't know yet, man. <laughs> Zorro or something. Right. <clears throat> Brother, man, it's good to have you on. Appreciate you as always. We missed you the last episode. I know you're pretty daggone busy and understand that. So thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time tonight and talking with us. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, guys, we are on Pickwick Lake. And uh, I'm going to let Kyle talk for a little bit and, you know, talk about the event so far and what he knows, man. Yeah, so I haven't heard a whole lot of reports from practice. <laughs> they obviously started practice on Monday. Today is Tuesday. Um, 
you know, I think a lot of looking around naturally when you get a ledge fishing tournament or a tournament that's potentially going to be dominated on the ledges, um, it's not really so much always about fishing. It's a lot of looking around, graphing, um, trying to find those bigger schools of fish. Um, so like I said, I haven't heard a whole lot of report. If you go to Bassmaster.com, you can look at Justin Atkins, um, who's obviously the local stick there on Pickwick. His practice gallery is up on the website, so that might give you a better idea um, as to what's going on. But like I said, a lot of uh, the, the super high potential for ledge fishing. Let's just put it that way. Kyle, what you got coming out this week, man? Because you, you guys all know, if you don't know already, man, Kyle Jesse is a writer for Bassmaster. And, he, you know, he's going to be pumping out some content. So uh, what, do, what do we look forward to coming out from you? So the most recent things um, is my fantasy fishing uh, column for Pickwick, uh, Pickwick's Offshore Potential. Uh, you can find that on Bassmaster.com on the fantasy fishing blog or bar, excuse me, or on the <laughs> fantasy fishing website on the um, <clears throat> on the homepage there. It has all the stories from all of our uh, pundits and uh, you can find it there. And then Ronnie Moore and myself just knocked out episode 79, I believe, of the Inside Bassmaster podcast, uh, where we made our fantasy picks and talked about Pickwick Lake. So those are the most uh, recent things and definitely the most pertinent to this event. There we go. So Pickwick, let's talk about it. Let's break it down. Group A. I have yeah, Brandon, I got Brandon Paul in it. I dig it. Yeah, you can't can't beat the momentum there. Yes. Um, the only thing with Brandon Polnick, obviously, um, most people know, I guess, is that his uh, wife is um, going to have a child any day now. Um, yes. Hopefully, for the sake of Brandon and for the <laughs> sake of everybody. Uh, no, I never, I never even thought about that to be honest. Hopefully, that you know that doesn't come to uh, fruition. But I, I believe, from everything I've heard, is that he will leave if the child is going to be born. So. Um, I know he's hoping for it, you know, the child to wait <laughs> here a few days, um, if possible. And I think we're all waiting, hoping that, you know, selfishly as fishing fans to watch Brandon um, yes. continue the amazing season that he's had so far. But, um, but yeah, assuming none of that happens, Brandon Vaughn, like you can't beat the, uh, the success he's had this season and how good of an offshore, offshore, excuse me, fisherman he is. Definitely, uh, definitely a good scenario for Brandon Pollock. What you got, brother? So, uh, bucket A, I'm going David Mullins. Okay. Um, a lot of my picks, when, when you when you look at them, I mean, it's super highly based on uh, offshore fishing, you know, ledge fishing, something David Mullins is really good at. Yes. Uh, I don't think David Mullins has really had the opportunity to do that a whole lot here recently because of the nature that we really just haven't had a whole lot of ledge fishing tournaments, um, at least of recent memory. 2019 on Gunnersville was – Partially a ledge fishing tournament wasn't one on ledges, but there was some offshore fishing going on. Right. Um, I think you're going to see David Mullen shine also having a really good season third in AOI right now. So I like uh, Mullins to keep up the momentum and you know, show off his ledge fishing um, forte, I guess, if you will. All right, group B, would you like to go first? You want me to? I'll, I'll go first. I got a. Chris Johnston in bucket B, um, not Johnston. super high percentage right now, just at 5.2%. Uh, pretty much anytime you can get a Johnston brother for that low of percentage, it's usually a good thing, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, offshore fishing. And, you know, I wrote about this in my column, but, you know, naturally we all think of Chris Johnston and Corey Johnston both uh, as smallmouth fishermen, and they absolutely are that. But uh, both have had a good bit of success fishing ledge tournaments based on, you know, FLW, their yeah. you know, history and Bassmaster. They're both very good ledge fishermen. Uh, so I would look for Chris Johnston and Bucket B to be a, uh, a good value pick at 5.2%. All right. I went a little, a lot higher, really. Um, I went with another ledge fishing, uh, Buddy Gross. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's hard not to I mean, go with Buddy Gross. But I, I just I just had to get away from the high percentage in one bucket. I hate that I had to be with Buddy Gross because I certainly feel like he's going to catch him. It's yes. not a matter of I don't think he's going to catch him. I definitely right, right. Think he's um, it's just one of those deals where I'm just going to take the risk with the uh, lower <laughs> percentage. But Buddy Gross will catch him. Well, for all you guys who knew know that you know I did this show last week by myself, which is cool. But I did go middle of the road last week. I went with a lot of low people. 
It didn't play out too good. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> it didn't play out too good in my out. favor last week. So it's like, crap, I yeah. dropped from a 96 percentile to 92. Still up there, but not where, you know, I mean, I had guys that never even play fantasy fish and leap over me last week. And I was like, crap. It happens. <clears throat> fantasy fishing so volatile as it is because, um, you know, drain the lake is a little easier because you can kind of get away with having a couple of good guys. And if you get the winner, obviously that'll yeah. change your whole tournament. Um, but Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing is completely different in the sense that it's really easy to bomb, even with <laughs> some of the, the high percentage picks, the, you know, the chalk picks, sometimes that doesn't work out. And it, uh, it it's not, it's not hard at all to, to fall. Even I if mean, I, I, I even stayed fishing. away from, you know, Patrick Walters for last week. I mean, you know, and I love big Patrick Walters fan here. I mean, we love him here at the Basscast. And it's like, no, we're going to stick away. We're going to stay away. And I, I think I stayed like in the mid 20 percentile range for most of everybody I picked. I didn't go too far below that, but I, it's where I stuck and got me a little bit. <clears throat> All right, group C. Uh, you want me to go first? I can go. I, I actually, I picked last week's winner. I, I figured the momentum uh, and he had a 28th planet, 28th finish in 2021 on Pickwick. So I just went with the momentum from uh, last week going into this week. So with Lee Livesey. Lee Livesey, fair enough. Definitely like that pick. I wouldn't I wouldn't see him being one of the guys that, um, you know, it's not unusual to see guys have a slow finish or a bad tournament after winning one. I definitely don't think he's going to be one of those. So I, I definitely think Lee Livesey's a good pick in C. Uh, however, I am going with uh, Clint Davis and Bucket C. So obviously – Big time Coosa River guy lives yes. here on the Coosa River, right? Basically, right next to where I live. Um, but his history of success on the Tennessee River, really, regardless what lake it is and what time of the year it is, is is really good. And his worst finish that I could find on the Tennessee River, at least in recent memory, was last year at Pickwick. But the reason being is because he was dealing with some uh, labrum, you know, shoulder issues. Right, right. Actually went on to take a medical hardship, you know, nothing. Yeah, I remember Really, that. for the most part, yeah, went all that well. So I, I don't think that you can chalk that up to, uh, you know, him not being able to figure out Pickwick. And, you know, over the history of his career, kind of the same way with Johnson, maybe don't think about him as being a ledge fisherman, but um, especially on Tennessee River ledge fishing events, he's always been really consistent. <laughs> it's not to say that he goes out there and you know you know cracks the top five every time but he's he's almost always in the top 20 or 30 and uh you know i like clint davis to uh have a breakout event here at pickwick that's awesome you know you, you talk about that right there and it's it's always you know you're hoping you want the final you necessarily the final day but at least you want your three out of your top five going into the third day sure so i mean you know to get them important points and you know that's one thing i look at I mean, I hate to say it, you know, I love Steve Kennedy, but I mean, there's a lot of different anglers out there that will take that big jump in day one and day two. And then day three, you wonder what in the world happened. Things changed. I mean, the lake's always changing and everything's always changing, but it's just, it's just always picking that consistent person to get, you know, for, for the third day. So, and I actually, in group D, we're talking about that. I went ahead and went with Steve Kennedy. I've just, you know, in, in group D, I went with him. I mean, it's like, he finished fourth there in 2021, but I went through the list and I was like, and he likes ledge fishing as well. So, and that's, and that's another one. So it's like kind of hard not to pick him, but you just hope and pray he f makes it to the third day. Yeah. And just a really good, you know, current fisherman. Anytime yes. the current yes. balls, it seems like Steve Kennedy's always, always a, uh, a player. So I dig that pick. So, uh, in bucket D I went with the high percentage. Um, oh. pretty much to explain my logic and it's not always like this, but it <laughs> seems like most tournaments that I do well, this is the case. I'll usually have one or two high percentage guys, um, you know, where I feel like it's not worth taking a risk for a right. lower percentage guy. And then I'll go like two or three lower percentage guys. And, it, and a lot of times this year it's worked out because if you hit it just right, um, you know, like I said, just like anything, it, it works really well. Um, so I'm going Brock Mosley in bucket. D. Oh. He's, the highest, he's the highest of any angler in uh, bucket D, you know, not necessarily a big time ledge fisherman, but you have to consider, um, Brock Mosley grew up fishing Pickwick. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. he's got some smaller lakes in Mississippi that he, you know, also considers home lakes, but, um, you know, if you talk to him, I, I think that he would, 
he would uh, also tell you that Pickwick is one of his home lakes, really, truly, because he grew up fishing a lot of big tournaments on Pickwick. Obviously, second place last year, came so close to winning um, at Pickwick. Mm -hmm. Like I said, maybe not as big a strength as, you know, fishing offshore, but, you know, somebody that's been there and done that a lot on the lake, regardless how much he likes it or not, um, you know, I think we'll play big time. So, and he needs a good finish. You know, yes. he, finished, yes. he had a good finish to Chickamauga, um, went on to fork <laughs> to have a, a slow or a lower finish, which was a little unexpected because he's he's a big momentum guy. He's always, you know, in his career when he when he has a good finish, it's usually several right in a row. Um, so I, I'm I like Brock Mosley to have bounced back in uh, in bucket D, and uh, that's that's what I'm going with, despite the high percentage. Not a huge fan of that, but we're going to deal with it. All right. Um, bucket E, guys, that is so freaking hard. I did spend a lot of time looking through Bucket E, and I'm going with Hank Cherry. I just, you know, I, I'm hoping that things will, I mean, either uh, other than the classic, which went pretty daggone well, I hope the rest of the year kind of hasn't been his year. So I'm hoping that he finished fifth in 2021 on Pickwick. So that's what I'm going with is uh, Hank Cherry. I dig it. Yeah, he needs a he needs a good finish for sure. He needs a good finish. He really does. I mean, he needs to get back in that. As you were speaking earlier, for Brock, the momentum. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what's crazy. If you look at Bucket E at this point in the season, you know, halfway point, it is really, really, really incredible. Some of the names that are in yeah. Bucket E. I mean, you'd never expect them to be in Bucket E. Expect you know. It's not unusual to see stuff like that in the first, you know, couple tournaments of the year because you have a bad tournament, two bad tournaments, whatever. But, you know, at this point, you're not really talking so much about bad tournaments. Like, it's just been a bad year to this point yeah. to be still in Bucket East. So there's there's some really hard to figure ones. But um, I definitely think there's a handful of guys in E that are going to, you know, break out and have a good event here. Um, I went with a little lower percentage um, okay. in Bucket E with Brian Schmidt. So All right, Brian yeah. Schmidt had a had a top 10 there at uh, Pickwick last year. Obviously, you know, I'm not suggesting you should go based purely on history compared to last year because it's not even going to be remotely the same as far as how they're catching them. Um, opposite end of the lake entirely, you know, going out of Counts, Tennessee versus Florence. Uh, not springtime. It's going to be a summertime ledge type tournament. Yep. I'm sure guys will catch them shallow. I'd still expect that a little bit. But, you know, I'd say the consistent guys are probably going to be ledge fishing. Um, with that said, Pickwick has a lot of grass um, in certain areas, and Brian Schmidt seems to catch them. Not seems to catch them. Brian Schmidt always catches yes. them when there's grass involved somehow. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really have a scientific proof or a reason why he's going to catch them. I just think that if somebody's able to, you know, dial it in in the grass and make that work, I think it's going to be Brian Schmidt. Um, and that fact that he's had, a, you know, a little bit of success there at uh, Pickwick anyways, I definitely like Schmidt in bucket E. I mean, he did really well up here on the James River for the open. Sure. The Northern open fishing grass and everything up there. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's – and he's sitting at 5.6%, as I just looked up a little while ago. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, that's an awesome pick, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's crazy like you were saying, Group E, man. You got Kyle Welcher down there. Um, you got Paul Mueller, Wes Logan. Um, I was just – Ike and Ellie. I mean, it's, I don't know what's done happened for poor Ike, but uh, Derek Hudnall. I mean, there are a lot of good anglers in Group E. Oh, no doubt. It's, it is loaded with guys you wouldn't expect to be in Bucket E. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it really is. <clears throat> it's mind blowing, you know, this year. And, you know, it's been a crazy year for a lot of different anglers. So, I mean, you know, we've had, what one or two in the last week go go out with medical hardships right so i mean it's it's an interesting 2022 so what else been going on at bass master man give it you know we've had you know we, we've all had we had a month off practically a month off then we came back last well two weekends ago and now back to pickwick give us a little inside scoop what's going on around bass master man what anything you can drop on us here at let's talk fantasy fishing I don't have anything crazy for you. Like you said, it's been, it's been different this year because the season was so front loaded, um, had a lot of events there at the beginning of the yeah. season it seemed like forever until that fork tournament, which is, yeah, which, you know, it's not a necessarily a bad thing. I think 
a lot of the anglers enjoyed the break. I know a lot of the staff and people that, you know, travel to the tournaments enjoyed the break, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, we got Pickwick coming up obviously this week and then, uh, yeah, there's there's always events going on, so it's not to say that there's been a big break. I mean, it's yeah, there are a lot of opens. You know, there yeah, were some opens I mean, slammed in there, guys, but no elite event. Sure. So you know, like I said, I, I know that uh, everybody's excited to uh, get back to Pickwick, different side of Pickwick. Um, kind of enjoy that. I got to cover a kayak tournament last year out of Kansas, Tennessee, and I actually do enjoy that end of the lake as well. Um, I'd never even been there till last year, but it, it is very nice, and I think. Uh, I think this event's going to be really awesome. As far as inside information, I don't really have any inside information. All right, there you go. <laughs> hey, I do have one. Fan- time, pretty much, I do have one fantasy, and I, and I actually kind of thought about this person, but a little bit. But uh, Scott Martin, man, for this event, he was pretty yeah. ranked pretty daggone high. I mean, he, he's ranked me right around that medium. I think he was in Group D. I want to say. Trying but- to find it now. But he was actually ranked pretty daggone high up there. And it's like, should we take Martin or should we let him ride? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I would have expected him to catch him really good at. Yeah, so he's in bucket C. Yeah, C. There it is. 20.2%. Yeah, Um, I mean, I was like, wow. Definitely another one of those guys that's had a lot of success ledge fishing. Um, It was actually, like I said, surprising to me, at least. There's my dog in the background. She's trying to get in the camera shot. Um, but he's had a lot of success, you know, fishing offshore, ledge fishing, that kind of thing. Um, the first turn or the tournament at Fork was a little surprising, though, because on day one, we had a, one of our photographers covering him up until like 1 p.m. He didn't even have a bass in the live well. So, oh, wow. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I think Scott Martin could definitely catch him. That's just one of the buckets that I'm going to go lower percentage. But mm-hmm. I definitely think that there's a, you know, for good reason that he would be, uh, you know, sitting at 20. 20- 20.2 percent what are we thinking on this thing weight wise i think i picked like 67 pounds or something me and you are way off because i've i've got it taken uh over 20 pounds a day at 80, oh wow 86 10 is what i've Woo! got so, i think that uh i think that guys that find the right school that don't get bothered too much yeah um you know i think they'll be able to i don't you know i don't know that they'll have 20 pounds a day but all it takes is somebody catching, you know, a 26 to 28 pound bag one day and then yeah. just kind of coasting the rest of the way. It's not that hard to get to 86 when you do that. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, somebody finding the, the right school or schools, uh, you know, to be consistent. But I, I would I would think it'll take over 80 pounds okay. um, to win. But I, I also wouldn't be surprised if it's less as well, because, you know, I think Pickwick historically has always been known to, you know, have really good ledge fishing, but it's not maybe as plentiful as like Kentucky Lake when the ledge fishing there was really good. So I don't know that anybody will get like a whole lot of schools to themselves and that will probably hurt the weights at large, but um, it'd be interesting to see. You think it's going to be a tight race here or you think it's going to be one that's going to run the, run the field here for the whole four days or you think it's going to be something, a back to back, you know, see a lot of lead changes. There you go. I almost yeah. think about NASCAR here. It's like, <clears throat> it's hard to predict. I would say they'll probably be, the weights will be pretty tight. Um, I don't think the pos, you know, I don't think it's a massive potential for somebody catching, you know, way over what the rest of the field does. Right. Uh, and then, like I said, being consistent with ledge fish and schools of fish, regardless of yes. on ledge or not, um, is definitely difficult, especially when, like I said, you're talking about the amount of pressure that these, fish get not even just from that one guy it'll probably be several anglers fishing a school of fish throughout the course of the day and then you know just local pressure and everything else it's it, it's really hard to be consistent and just run away with it so i'm gonna guess it'll be close i think you'll see lead changes just about every day but heck yeah um, that's, that's what that's we my, like yeah that's my best guess i could be completely wrong somebody could nah, that's away. what we like here man we'll see kyle appreciate you Thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your schedule tonight. Your dog's awesome, by the way. Yeah, yeah. she's she's excited to uh, go on a walk here after all. So that's what she's looking forward to. All right, guys, we're going to be right back. All right, guys, as always, man, we really appreciate Mr. Kyle Jesse coming on with us tonight and talking fantasy fishing. And uh, good luck to everybody, man. Pick, wick, lake. 
Holy cow. I, you know, guys, I'll be honest with you guys. After hearing Brandon Polinick, I'm probably going to change my pick. I don't know what to pick on that one. We got a day to think about it. I'm riding with him for now. But as always, you guys know, I'll be posting my picks on our Fantasy Fishing Facebook page on thebasscast.com. So if you're a part of that group, really appreciate you guys checking that group out as well. But uh, it doesn't matter what fantasy fishing you pick, play, whether it's for us or it's for – there's a ton more other groups out there, as well as um, <clears throat> Tackle Warehouse. I almost slipped my mind. Tackle Warehouse. So, guys, appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Go out. Make some good picks. Good luck, everyone. Bassmaster is back. You know, it was Texas last week. It's, I think that was what they call the Texas Fest, if I remember correctly. I'm ready to get back to some regular fishing. That's what I'd call it. But uh, have a great weekend, and uh, you guys be safe. Talk to you later. Bye. Oh, yeah, before I go real quick, don't forget, Exxon Lures, sponsoring this. The winner gets three packs of this event. That's right. The winner of this event gets three packs. The overall winner for the 2022 season gets a $100 gift card to the tackle store of your choice. So, Exxon Lures, the BassCast.com, Fantasy Fishing. You can win right there. Let's talk fantasy fishing. Have a great night.